Some of you wish you were young and healthy. But I know the Lord's good to us no matter what stage of our life we're in. He's always faithful. And uh, we can trust Him. We can trust the Lord. I was just saying to my wife, I said, you realize next Sunday is Palm Sunday already. I mean, we're getting that close to Easter. And uh, time just flies. But I cannot be more thankful than that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. 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 If he didn't rise from the dead, he wasn't who he said he was going to be. Amen. I've asked my wife if she would lead us this morning in an opening hymn that's not in your hymnal. It's a game changer. 
I was thinking as we were singing that song about being on the battlefield. You know, the truth is, we have an enemy. Brother Paul Medlin was mentioning it in our Sunday school class. Don't forget you've got an enemy. Right. And there are times that we even get wounded. Right. Anybody out there ever been wounded? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about you had your eye poked with a stick. I'm talking about spiritually. You were wounded. Yeah. Uh, it is a battlefield. Yes, is. And when we get wounded, what do we do? We get back up and we grab that shield of faith. And we say, Lord, you help me. Praise the I'm Lord. Going to keep on fighting. Right. And there's no reason to stop, especially the nearer and nearer heaven gets. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Now, there's all kinds of reasons for discouragement, especially as a person gets older. You can feel loneliness. How many of you older people feel loneliness at times? It's okay to tell the truth. I'm, I'm seeing heads shake like this and a couple hands go up. Hey, the enemy will use that to wound you. Yes. You've got to decide you're going to pick up that shield of faith and you're going to say what the Word of God says. He will never leave me nor forsake me. I've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And some things are lies. Amen? People do care. Amen? The Lord is there. And He hasn't forgotten us. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, I have a few announcements that I need to make uh, this morning. Um, and then one that I will make a little bit later. Um, so if I forget, somebody remind me about that. Uh, but we are collecting items for the spring basement sale. That's going to be in April. And some people have been begun bringing in some items for the basement sale. And so uh, if you have items to bring, you're welcome to talk to Sister Doris or Sister Fran Strange. Uh, because they are the ones that are going to be organizing it. Uh, getting volunteers to help them and doing it. Me and my wife are not helping them this year. We didn't really help much last year either, now that I think about it, or the year before. <laughs> also, coming up in, a, in about a week and a half, a little over that, on um, April the 3rd, we are going to be having a Good Friday communion service here at the church at 7 o'clock. It'll be the first time that we've done that, and uh, we invite you to come and join us for that service. And also, there's a sign-up sheet for Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, we're going to be having a sunrise service that begins at 6.30 in the morning. That is early. Okay? Uh, the last two Sundays we did an Easter sunrise service. It started close to the same time. So um, we're going to have an Easter sunrise service followed by the breakfast. Um, the breakfast, uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that so we can make sure we fix enough food. And then we'll be having an Easter service upstairs and we'll be dismissing for the day and no evening service on Easter Sunday, just the early morning services. So we have that happening. Also this week is when we are taking a trip down to Catfish Kettle. Uh, for those that would like to go down there, um, we're having lunch and the bus will be driving down. All you have to do is sign up out there on the sign-up sheet and we're going to have a crew of that go down there. We'll be leaving the church at 10.30 and uh, we're going to have a little free will offering for those that ride the bus that would like to help cover the gas, but there's no set fee um, for the ride down there. Amen? Amen? Lots of good stuff happening. One other thing that I wanted to say um, is that I received a phone call. It happened earlier this week at the church, but I didn't get it until today from a pastor in Idaho. And um, he called to let me know that a family from his church was moving to just a few blocks from the church here. And so I listened to that message, and um, he was wanting to put them in the care of our church. Uh, then I got the message from the family. They were moving in, wanted to know if we could help them with uh, moving and with getting the you all unloaded once they got here. And then they called me back, I guess, yesterday, and they were here and didn't know if anybody could help with unloading the U-Haul, and I hadn't got the message. So I contacted them this morning. And um, I said, if I can get some people to go over, I will be there at 3 o'clock to help them uh, for an hour or so unload the last of the items from the U-Haul. So if you're able to help at 3 o'clock, um, let me know. If you say, Pastor, I can help, but I can't do it that late. If it was at 2, let me know. We'll see what we can do to help the family out. Um, pardon me? Oh, that was Dottie. I thought she was saying something. Somebody was saying something to me, but... Um, we're going to try to help them out. And in fact, if you believe that you'll be able to help, would you just raise your hand? You say, I can help at 3 o'clock. I see one hand. 
Come on, Blake, raise your hand up. You're young and you're healthy. <laughs> Don't even keep it down. Goodness gracious sakes alive, boy. Okay, I got two people that can help. Brother Boyles, him, anybody else today? Uh, okay, I got a hand here. We'll just, and I got a hand there. We'll meet at the church uh, right at 3, and we'll zip up there. I've got the address. It's not very far at all. We'll get it done out and meet this family. So I'm kind of excited uh, to have them. There's a lady named Ann Rowe, and her son and his wife are there, and his wife is expecting. And so there's a young couple uh, and then a mother. So we're looking forward to have them as being part of our service. I, I talked to them this morning, and she said they'll be here next Sunday. Amen? So we're grateful for that. We've mentioned that there is a battle, and there is a battle. But the Lord has already fought the enemy and he's won. Amen? And we don't have to walk in our own strength. We get to walk in the strength of the Lord. And when we walk in his strength, nothing can defeat us. It's only as we turn our eyes away from the Lord that the enemy has a chance. Until then, he has no chance. And it makes me think of this old song. Uh, and if you know it, sing it with me. Without
is late to sin. Uh, God has a purpose for our life, and we miss out on it, and that's the worthlessness. We wouldn't have direction. We just go whatever way we want it. But because of Jesus, I'm saved. Amen? And if you're not saved, you can be saved. One of the tricky things is we think we can make it without the Lord. But what we have is far less than true living as God designed us. Amen? Amen. If you have a need on your heart this morning and you would like us to remember in prayer, would you show it by the uplifted hand? Say, Pastor Singleton, I got need this morning. I see hands from the front to the back. I just want us to take our needs to the Lord, but also to take our confidence to Him. Yeah. Sometimes we take our needs to the Lord, but we don't take our confidence with us. And then we've prayed without faith, and it just doesn't really go anywhere. But we want to take our needs to the Lord. We want to take our confidence to the Lord and our thanks and our praise to Him for what He's done. Let's bow our heads. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank You, O Lord, for the way You move and touch our hearts and that You are faithful. Even when we are not faithful, you are still faithful, O oh God. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you have the best plan for us possible. And as we walk away from you, we find out, Lord, that life can bring some pretty awful heartaches. And then we are left without comfort. But we thank you, O oh Lord, that you will stick by us and that we can cling to you. We can bring you our needs and our brokenness. We can bring you, O oh Father, the loved ones that we have that are not saved, and we can ask you to save them and transform their lives. We can bring the conditions of our own heart and our lives. We pray, Father, that you would touch people emotionally. If they're downcast, O oh God, we thank you that you can be the lifter of our head. We pray, Lord, that you would touch people physically this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would have your way, and we tell you that you are great because you are. And our confidence is in you. We ask that you would minister in this service. Encourage us. Draw us near. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Amen. We'll have our brethren come at this time to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. As Sister Trevor comes. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to be part of what you're doing. We couldn't do anything to save ourselves. It took you alone. But we ask, Lord, that you would help us as we partner with you to accomplish the things that are dear to your heart. I pray, Lord, that this offering would be used and that souls would be saved. That we would see your kingdom grow. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everyone said, Amen and amen. <laughs>
we'll have our children to be dismissed for Children's Church.